Okay, I have 10.05 here on my clock. We'll go ahead and get started. We're, we're joined by Alabama University head coach Connell Maynard. Coach Maynard, uh, obviously, uh, interesting week for you guys. You were scheduled to uh, have a game. Obviously, it was it was postponed due to COVID-19 protocol. So if you could please uh, just kind of recap uh, what you did with your uh, open date and also uh, kind of talk to us a little bit about your upcoming opponent. Yeah, I so, said, you know, a lot of the same thing, you know, we uh, – Unfortunately, we've been in this situation uh, way too often. Uh, but of course, the, the young men's safety is most important. So we understand that it could happen. And, uh, you know, games been postponed. So we just got to keep doing what we're doing, uh, you know, try to stay healthy, uh, go over the fundamentals. Uh, hopefully we won't make no mistakes because we've been working on the fundamentals a lot here. You know, we only played one game. I think we're the only team to only play one game so far this year. Uh, so... We're looking forward to get back in action this week against Grambling, our first and only home game, actually. So uh, we're very excited. Guys are excited and, uh, to get back out there and start working and, and finally get to play again. Uh, and, and like I said, we play Grambling. Uh, Coach Fives always does a great job there, never had a losing season. And, uh, you know, they're kind of struggling a little bit right now. But, you know, they're a dangerous team because they have nothing to lose. And uh, Coach Fives won't let them quit. I, I guarantee you that they're going to play hard. They're going to keep fighting. So we have to be ready. We haven't played, so we got to be sharp and um, be ready to go because Grambling going to come here and fight you. And uh, we, we'll be ready for the for the challenge, though. Appreciate those comments, Coach Maynard. Mitty, if you do have questions, please use the raise your hand feature uh, here on Zoom. We ask that you please limit your questions to one question and a follow-up question. We've got 10-minute segments for each of our head coaches. We'll try to mix in as many questions as time allows. Once again, please use the raise your hand feature if you have questions for Coach Maynard. Coach, my next question, uh, obviously, um, and uh, we'll go to Dr. Kenyatta Cavill after this, but my, my one question for you is obviously, you know, we've talked about uh, Kill Glass, what he brings uh, to this football team. Um, you know, when you look at a season of this nature, uh, where you've had the starts and stops, how uh, difficult or challenging is it to get not only to have him in a rhythm, but just your entire offense and defensive units? Uh, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, you know, um, I, I told the guys this weekend that, you know, our opponents and the rest of the league are playing games. You know, they're getting game, game situations, live game action, and uh, you just can't replace that with all. You can practice all you want, but until you get in that game and get that game flow, the game speed, the game conditioning, uh, those guys are getting that. We're not. So I told our guys, we got to do a little extra on your own. And uh, it's tough. It's tough just keeping that chemistry going. Uh, because, like I say, practice is not the same game as game speed. So it's tough on the offense. Uh, not as tough on the defense, I don't think. Uh, but I think it's a little tough on the offense uh, because you need that uh, cohesiveness together on the offense, everybody clicking. But at defense, you know, they, they just fly around. You know, you fly around, and as long as you're in your gaps, um, you got you got a chance. And, you know, normally early in the season, the defense are normally ahead of the offense anyway because of that reason. So I don't think it affects the defense as much. Our first question from our media will come from Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. Good morning, Coach Maina. This is Dr. Cavill inside the HBC Sports Lab. Yes, sir. How you morning. doing today? Doing pretty well. Pretty well. Thank you. With that, I wanted to ask you in regards to a traditional season in the fall, you have buys that are scheduled. Are you doing anything similar to what you would do during that circumstance, or is it different in regards because of the way the buy happened in this situation? No, it's, it's kind of – it's pretty much the same. Um, I just give them two or three days off and uh, just work it with – they don't get too many days in a row off where they get out of shape. So I try to give them no more than two, and then we come back and go two and maybe give them another day off, um, something of that nature. And uh, – just, just get out there and do a lot of running and fundamentals and, and then try to rest up the guys that's beat up. Thank you, Coach. Look forward to seeing the team this week. Yes, sir. Our next question comes from Rashad Milligan. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Rashad Milligan out in Jackson, Mississippi with the playing budget. Good. How you doing, Rashad? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. My question for you this week is, um, you know, obviously with that Jackson State game being moved up to ESPN, I just wanted to know your thoughts on that. I think it's great. I think it's great for our program, their program, and our league. Um, 
to get a nationally televised game. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be prepared. We'll put a good show on. And, and so with Jackson, Coach, Coach Sanders will have his team ready. And uh, we'll put a good show on for ESPN and, and the nation and show them that what SWAC football is all about. Uh, it's a win-win situation, man. We're playing on national TV. All eyes will be on us. Next question comes from Stephen J. Gaither. Hey, Coach Manning, how you doing this morning? Good, Stephen. How you doing? Doing well, doing well. Um, just wanted to um, just wanted to ask you. Rashad kind of took the first question that I was going to ask you, so uh, I'll, uh, I'll go with the other one I had. Um, obviously, the first game, uh, you know, it's been a couple weeks since then, but um, you know, your defense really came out and uh, and, and made uh, a lot of plays. Uh, and really kind of dominated, uh, you know, against South Carolina State uh, this week. Uh, you know, what do you – how – like you said, the defense kind of has kept – you know, it's a little bit easier for them to keep their rhythm. But, um, you know, um, who's one guy that, that, you know, in practice that has uh, impressed you that we should uh, – you know, the folks who, that we should keep an eye on this week um, that's maybe made some progression since even the South Carolina State game? Well, we haven't been, really been doing a lot of hitting – uh, and, and going live uh, since that, I, I think we might have went full gear one day since that game. Uh, like I said, you know, we've just been trying to work on the fundamentals and get these guys back healthy and uh, cut out the bumps and bruises and make sure we get them to the game. Uh, you know, we got a lot of practices in, so we don't have to really bang anymore. But, <clears throat> you know, uh, I think Trenton McGee is playing well. You know, he had a big hit against them. Uh, Amani Holloway. Didn't make a lot of plays, but he's an all-conference player uh, that's always performing, is always around the ball. Of course, Q. Kelly had two interceptions in that game. Um, so, you know, uh, Eli Jackson, um, you know, number 44, defensive lineman, uh, you know, he can make, he got potential to make some plays. So we got, we got some guys over there. So uh, we feel good about that defense. They flew around, had a good game. But it's just one game now. It's just one game. Even if they would have played bad, it would still be just one game. And that's what we talk about all the time. It's just one football game. We got to continue to do it. Uh, play after play, quarter after quarter, half after half, game after game. You can't live off last week's performance. You can't live off the first quarter performance. You can't live off the first half performance. You got to play for four quarters. Our next question comes from Kendrick Marshall. How you doing, Coach? Great. How you doing, um, Kendrick? I'm good. Um, yeah, you, you've had a little bit of upheaval in your schedule due to teams um, being impacted by COVID. Um, have you got a new appreciation for the protocols and how have you tried to keep your team protected and safe um, during this period? Uh, we make it mandatory inside that you wear your mask. Outside, uh, if you're within six feet, if you're outside of six feet, you can have your mask down. Within six feet, keep your mask up. Um, we test. We uh we get tested every not we get tested twice a week, but we also test for our fevers uh, every morning. And uh, if you don't pass the fever test, of course you have to go back home. You can't uh, live practice. You can't go to the cab. You can't do anything around any of the student athletes. So uh, our university has put together a great uh, package and situation for our guys, and uh, it's work. It's work to perfection. Uh, <laughs> I think we had two cases. We had two cases since January, January 12th. And you're talking about a hundred and hundred and some individuals that's in the football program, uh, 110 players and 15 coaches and trainers and uh, ball boys and equipment people. So you're talking about 140 people and we had two cases. So, uh, and then just keeping your hands washed. You can, you can do everything perfect and still get it. So we just been blessed. We've been blessed to only have two cases. understand why maybe some programs have not decided to play football in, in the spring and decided to wait to the fall? Ask that one more time. You was in and out. I'm sorry about that. Um, based on your experience so, so far, having games impacted by COVID, do you kind of now understand why some programs maybe was hesitant to play in the spring? Um, no, I, in my opinion, uh, playing or not playing don't will not really stop you from getting COVID. I, I think, like I say, you can do everything right, not play football, do everything right, and you can still get COVID cases from from just walking around, regular student, you know. Um, 
And then all those teams that's not playing are about to start spring practice. So they're doing the same thing we're doing. They're they about to go to practice. They're lifting weights. They're going to meetings. And so they they got to, they got run the same risk that we run, but they don't have any – they're not playing any games. So, uh, you know, that's – that's their that's their that's their choice is you know and, and that's what they decide to do and we decide to play so I just got to worry about us. All right, thanks. Yes, sir. Okay, we've reached our ten minute availability for Coach Manor. Coach Manor, obviously, uh, we do always appreciate your time and we look forward to speaking with you again next week. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. See y'all guys Thank next you. week. We'll next be joined by Alabama State head coach Donald Hill Ely. I believe we do have Coach Ely here with us. Coach, uh, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Um, I was trying to click on this thing to keep saying uh, the, the video because the host has me muted. All right, okay. we good. Okay. Good. good deal. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Coach. Coach, uh, thank you again for joining us. If you could please uh, start us out with an opening statement about your team's most recent 35 to 28 victory at home versus Jackson State. You know what? It was a, a great, uh, exciting contest. Um, uh, you know, our young men played hard, uh, you know, going against a much improved uh, Jackson State football team. Um, you know, it, it's a game that went down to the wire. Uh, you know, uh, we just ended up making one more play uh, than they made at the end uh, and was able to secure the game with a uh, – Touchdown run by Ezra Gray. I, I thought our defense uh, did a good job of, of trying to find a way to contain Jones, who's a, a young man with remarkable speed and and just got guys around him to uh, play at a high level. So it was a, a great day for SWAC football and a great platform to uh, show our brand of, of what we do here at Alabama State as well as a, as a conference. Appreciate those opening comments, Coach. We'll now open it up for questions for our media. Once again, if you do have questions for Coach, please utilize the raise your hand feature here uh, on our Zoom platform. Our first question comes from Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. Yes, Coach Dr. Ely. This is Dr. Cavill inside the HBC Sports Lab. Hope all is going well. Congratulations on a solid victory this weekend. Thank you, sir. I wanted to ask you about this matchup with uh, Arkansas Pimbla. Golden Lions, they're playing really good football on both sides of the ball. Uh, what have you seen on film that either concerns you or items that you believe that you can take to them? Well, you know, uh, Coach Gamble is doing a great job, uh, you know, uh, with that program. And uh, those kids are playing and they're playing together. Uh, their defense is setting uh, the offense up with great field position. Uh, the offense is capitalizing and uh, moving the ball down the field with a balanced attack uh, from throwing the football as well as running the football. Uh, they're real sound in the special team. So, you know, our work would be cut out for us going down to Pine Bluff. Uh, we know that those guys will be ready and we'll, and we'll have our guys ready also. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Our next question comes from Charles Bishop. Good morning, Dr. Hill. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I wanted to go back to last week. Uh, schematically, uh, you guys really made Jackson State very one-dimensional in the first half. Uh, what did you see on film uh, that really uh, allowed your, your front seven to, uh, uh, to really take away Jackson State's running game? Well, you know, when you go back and you look at the three wins, the, uh, the, the common denominator in, in those three wins was Jones. Uh, it, it would be third down. He would extend the play and, and uh, you know, hit, a, hit one of the receivers on scramble drill. Uh, you know, so we knew that we had to slow him down. It, it, I don't think there's any such thing as stopping him. That kid gets stronger and stronger as he goes. He can get up under your rush. Uh, you know, he can get on the perimeter and, and uh, still get a bunch of yards. So we needed to slow him down uh, we, and build a wall to make everything go east and west rather than coming back up vertical. You couldn't have – you can't have Jones rushing for 100 and those two running backs being able to get that done as well. So we had to, uh, you know, pretty much just isolate him to to try to, uh, you know, slow him down and then take those other guys out of the running game. Thank you, Coach. Mm -hmm. 
Our next question comes from Stephen J. Gaither. Hey, Dr. Ely, how you doing? Hey, good morning, sir. Very, great, great. Congratulations on the win. Um, obviously, a big stage. Uh, your guy Ezra had a big game. Uh, at the end of your presser, you made a statement, great punchline, but before that, you asked the question about, uh, you asked, made a statement about coaching. Um, could you kind of give a little bit more clarity as to where that came from and what? Well, well normally I don't, I don't even have a statement one way or the other. You know, we have our, um, uh, as we call it, Hornet Walk, as we walk from our pregame meal back over to the stadium. And we had a, a couple of JSU fans heckling us. Uh, you know, we don't have all the security that everybody else has. And, you know, the uh, person just was all oh, you, you guys in HBC, you can't coach. They can't do this. Um, you know, they can't do that. You guys don't know how to do that. So that wasn't intended for Coach Sanders. That was intended for that fan to go take our shoe out of out his rear end because it was, you know, sometimes, you know, fans can get too involved. So uh, Coach Sanders hadn't did anything but show class as he has dealt with me and my program. So that wasn't intended for him. As I told the players, we're not going to get in a, wor a, wor a war of words with people. But, you know, I still got these 18, 19 year olds that I'm walking to a locker room. And to be honest, you know, we were, we, we were men before I was a coach. I was a man before I was a doctor. And I'm still going to be a man even after all those things. So I'm, I, I, I just don't take a lot of bulls. So I wanted to let that person know the fact is for them to go back to Jackson. But if, and maybe I should, and I didn't know their name. So I should have been a little bit more clear and detailed with what I was saying. But it had nothing to do with our game. I thought uh, Coach Sanders and his staff has, has shown nothing but class on the arrival and on the departure. So uh, that, if that clears up anything. Uh, thanks a lot, Coach. And then secondly, um, again, Ezra. Obviously, he's a great young man. He's done a lot of great things for your program. Um, but what, is, what does it mean now that you've kind of stepped away from it for him to get that type of game in that type of atmosphere with so many eyes on you guys? Just what, it, what does it feel like for him for that for him? Well, you know what? Anytime you get a, a young man to have 300 and some all-purpose yards, uh, got stronger as the game go on. I mean, it, it uh, you know, it, it's just good for, for us to finish on the top end. You know, we've played these games before and a mistake here or a mistake there end up, uh, you know, causing our demise. But to be able to put together a total game and be victorious, these are ones that you take back and you continue to use to teach from, to to learn how to win. Winning is a is something that is taught and is uh, created by successes like this to build to further successes down the road. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Next question comes from Rashad Milligan. Good morning, Dr. Ely. How are you doing this morning? Good morning there, sir. Uh, my first question for you is, you know, you, you talked about Coach Sanders and JSU saw nothing but a class once they got off the bus. Once And then when they, lit, when they left, um, Coach Sanders, you know, he responded to a question about the picture that was put up of him uh, at the end of the game. And he called it childish. And, and then he said that there's just been a lot of, you know, problems, you know, where they couldn't have access to the locker room into the morning of the game. I, I just want to know, like, uh, kind of your response to, to what he was saying as far as, you know, the hospitality he received at Alabama State. Well, I, I think he received the, the same hospitality we give everybody else. You know, uh, the, the thing that when you're playing in the SWAC and you're playing at HBCUs, all of our resources are already allocated in the spring to other sports. The locker room that is used for uh, visiting teams is occupied during the week with uh, with freshman football players as uh, with the freshman football players. So you can't move into that room until we finish our week of work and week of practice. So it's customary that the team that comes to play you will move their things in on Saturday so that we can get a chance to get our young men to move their stuff out, give the cleaning crew a chance to come in and clean. So we're not going to break our schedule to receive you the way that you want to arrive. So if he took that as us not being hospitable, that, that's not the case. It's just a practice of how we do things here. Uh, what goes on in that arena, I'm not part of game day events. I'm only in charge of the guys in the helmet. So I half time, the only time I look up at the scoreboard is either to run the clock out 
or to see what we need to do to go uh, to close the gap on the score. That's the only part of the scoreboard that I'm responsible for is the score is what points go up there. So whatever happens with that, I can't answer for that one way or the other. So, but, you know, again, uh, you know, what that um, uh, Coach Sanders bring to our conference is I think it benefits us all. And I don't, you know, think that uh, no one is trying to run him away. I think, uh, you know, as you continue to move, that it's been distasteful stuff done both ways. You know, uh, when you look at guys uh, throwing the ball at the end of the game, it may be your philosophy, but you still got to understand that when you do things that's not customarily done when you're up by 40 points, is that that the class that goes into that goes, goes down to the young men. When, whenever you're up, you know, we can't think about what we do. We got to think about those young men that's in those helmets. What are we teaching them as we move them forward? And, and that's have, have always been something that has been customary and traditionally done, uh, you know, by all the old coaches I've been around, is that you still have to think about the young men that's on the field that, that may not be up at that particular time. What are we teaching them? And, uh, you know, so all the other stuff that goes with it, I mean, I'm only responsible for the 60 minutes during the game and the 70 guys on the helmet. And my follow-up to that, um, you know, you, you had a Gatorade bath at the end of the game. First win, physical win. You know, you had the Alcorn uh, forfeit, but first physical win in over a year. How did that moment feel? And, um, you know, just, yeah, how did that moment feel? You know what? You put a lot of time in this stuff, man. And to be able to get the fruit from your labor, uh, it's it's an unbelievable feeling. I mean, we put a lot of time into this game of football, a lot of practice, a lot of preparation, and to be able to win, uh, that's the fruit from that day. That's the fruit from your labor. We've got uh, actually gone over about two minutes for coaches' availability. We'll get two more questions in. They'll come from Kendrick Marshall and Tali Carr. Next question comes from Kendrick Marshall. Hey, Coach, congrats on the win last week. Thank you, sir. Yeah, um, we all know Ezra had a big game on the ground, but that was due in large part to the offensive line. Um, in the first three games JSU played, the, their defensive line really dominated their opponents. But against you guys, that was kind of the opposite. You, you guys, on the, the front line on both sides of the ball, really played well for um, for you guys. So how would you assess the way they played um, on Saturday? You know, uh, anytime you can, uh, you know, get – over 200 and some yards rushing, you know, that that says a lot for these young men, you know, four red shirt freshmen and a sophomore. And it says a lot for what, what is to come with the future. You know, it, it feels good to be able to line down and not replace, we had to replace the entire offensive line this year. And to, to go up against a Jackson and a Southern right off the bat, uh, and for the guys to have the production and make the adjustments that they've made, we're very happy for them and, and glad they're part of this program. But uh, we feel that defensive line, our defensive line is is probably one of the better ones in the FCS. Uh, we think that we can go against anyone and get pressure and, and stop the run. So, uh, you know, those guys only got room to get better. And we're looking forward to those guys competing against each, each other in practice so that we can get better as we move forward through this uh, spring season. Last question goes to Tali Hey, thank you, guys. Uh, good morning, doctor. A uh, quick question for you. I know you don't pay a lot of attention to the media and the hype around games, uh, but when a game really has a lot of juice, like this past weekend, and people were talking before and after the game, and it just has an elevated, uh, you know, sense of, of hype and importance around it. What are some ways that you kind of feel that as a coach, even though you're insulated, that you can tell, uh, you know, a game really had a lot of juice? Well, you know, I mean, you you got to – you know, I mean, you're in a situation where, you know, I'm a, a coach that's around here on a half a year, one year contract. So, oh, you got to win this one or you fired. I mean, you know, you got all kinds of craziness that goes on. But I, I got to always tell people that I was looking for a job when I found this one. So that's why you go to school, get an education. So that ain't going to hold it over my head. The key is I have a, a, a job to do as putting guys out there to be victorious against everybody we play. And uh, we work for one, we work for the same outcome. No one hates losing more than the coaches and the players on the field. When we, when you're going against a team like Jackson with the three and oh, you know, that hadn't been done in, in years at Jackson, that's a lot of momentum. And it says a lot for that program that, you know, 
Uh, Coach Sanders been there, got there one month before it was time to get stuff started. And these guys have adapted to his systems. They picked up. So the proof is in the pudding with what they're able to do. And then, you know, we've been working at this thing here at Alabama State for two years and and uh, we've been closing the gap. So, you know, again, it, it, it means a lot for us to go in these games and still move the ball forward and press it forward to separate ourselves for them. Once again, they're in the East. We have to compete for them for the Eastern title. But more importantly, when you have an icon such as Coach Sanders and you have a program that's rich in tradition such as Jackson, that game has always presented this kind of task, but not, maybe not at that magnitude or that level, but it's always been a rivalry between uh, Jackson and Alabama State that goes all the way back to W.C. Gordon and Houston Markham. Uh, you know, so we've always had rich traditions. And, and I think now with the insertion of Coach Sanders down there at Jackson, it has sh shaken things up to bring back some old rivalries and some old jaw breaking and all that stuff that goes into it. You know, so I hear, you know, I hear a lot of the stuff, you know, you can't uh, even though you, you're not reading the paper going looking for it, you're going to hear it because the same way that, that the fan decided to tell me that we couldn't coach. The same way, you know, but we, what have we been doing 100 years of football? We've been doing this thing 100 plus years at HBCU, sending guys to pros. We probably have more pros than any other conference. So sometimes you can hear the same record, record with, a new, with a new twist and you think it's something brand new. It's the same old dance. Dr. Ely, we appreciate your time, sir. We look forward to speaking with you again next week. Thank you all. Next, we'll be joined by Grambling State head coach Broderick Fobbs. Coach Fobbs, uh, we do apologize. We did go over for our last availability. We do appreciate your patience. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Coach, if you could uh, please just uh, open it up, uh, open us up uh, with a statement. Obviously, you'll uh, uh, get back on the field this upcoming week. So if you can kind of recap uh, last week and kind of preview this upcoming opponent. Well, you know, of course, you know, we're a work in progress. You know, uh, we're not playing really good football at this time. And uh, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of a lot of changes and, and things happening. And and uh, it's been very, very tough, you know. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, our kids are, are, are very, very high spirited. Um, had a really good meeting yesterday with our players. Uh, it all kind of started right after the game. Uh, we have really good kids and uh, just didn't play well in all three phases. You know, there were maybe five or six plays defensively where, you know, uh, they did a really good job of executing and we didn't have our eyes in the right spot. Uh, but my hat goes off, you know, to, uh, to Pine Bluff. They did an awesome job and they're a really good football team. And, and uh, we have to continue to get better because this week uh, it's even, even tougher. So uh, we have to go with Alabama and M and, and, uh, and, and play coach Maynard and a well-coached football team. And, you know, it's just one of those deals, you know, uh, uh, we have to continue to work and get better. And hey, coach, coach, I do apologize. I misspoke uh, saying that you had a bye this past week. You actually played Arkansas Pine Bluff, so I appreciate you clarifying that. Uh, coach, obviously back at it this upcoming week, uh, uh, and we uh, do ask all of our media, if you have questions for Coach Fob, please use the raise your hand feature uh, so that we can get you in queue to ask Coach Fobbs your question. But Coach, obviously back at it, uh, right quick turnaround. This game will be featured. Uh, on ESPN uh, three this upcoming week, you can talk a little bit, a little bit about that exposure uh, that brings your program being on that platform. Well, I mean, it's it's an opportunity. You know, it's an opportunity to get off the ground and 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 get back going and get back working and you know put one foot in front of the other so that uh, so we can get back on the train track. You know, uh, I don't think it's a it's a secret. I think everyone knows that we've been kind of derailed. You know, and uh, and and we have to pick ourselves back up and. And, uh, and get back on board and, and develop confidence and, and be ready to go. And, uh, um, you know, there's nobody that, you know, wants to win more than, you know, than our players and our coaches and, and everyone involved. And we, had just, we just have to continue and, and, you know, try to do things better and stay from the mistakes and, and, uh, and play good football. Currently taking questions for Coach Fobbs with Grambling State. Our first question for Coach comes from Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. This is Kenyatta Cavill with Inside the HBCU Sports Lab, Coach Fobbs. Um, you hadn't been in this type of position, um, certainly in the recent time, 
What do you lean on as you start to push things forward? Obviously, um, you know best things as necessarily to get your program moving forward, but what do you lean on during these times? That's a, that's a really good question, you know, and, um, you know, it's, you. It, it's really, really good. You know, I, you know, I, I don't I don't say it's good to be in this situation, but, you know, when you experience various situations, you know, you learn a lot from it. And uh, and being that, you know, we've had, you know, some things that have come about and some things that have happened to us, you know, on and off the field, you know, you learn a lot from it, you know, and, and it makes you a better coach. At the end of the day, your job is to try to be a better coach today than you were yesterday and try to make your team a better football team than they were the day before. And uh, and that's really what it's all about. You know, I pull from my experiences, you know, as a player, uh, because there's been times when when I've been down as a player, uh, I pull from experiences from watching, you know, other people like Coach Robinson go through, you know, tough times and things of that nature. Uh, and then my own father, you know, my own father went through, uh, the same type of situation when he was at North Carolina a and so, um, so, you know, the thing about us, you know, we just dust ourselves off, get back up, evaluate ourselves, look ourselves in the mirror, um, try to get better, try to change some of the things that we've done that, that, that's not working well, and, uh, and, then, and then press harder, you know, the next time. You know, it's almost like, you know, when you're trying to twist a bottle off, off the cap of a, of a Coca-Cola uh, bottle, you know, when it doesn't open up right away, hell, you got to put more force. And, and, uh, and that's just what we're, you know, we're trying to do and, and what we have to do. And, and, uh, and that's just the case, you know, everybody is, is really playing, you know, more sound and, and better football than we are right now at this time. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Next question comes from Stephen J. Gaither. Coach Fobbs, how you doing this morning? Hey, Stephen, how you doing? Doing great, doing great. Uh, last week you went against a, a young man at quarterback, uh, Skylar Perry, who uh, you know is a who, who is a, a obviously a talented passer. Um, doesn't get any easier this week uh, going up against uh, Glass. Just talk about um, you know just talk about some of the problems that he presents uh, for a defense, or some of the challenges that he you know presents to you guys as you try to uh, right this ship and push forward. Well, he's been a really good quarterback for a number of years here. And uh, and in my opinion, you know, he's the best quarterback in his league right now. Uh, has a quick release. Um, you know, Coach Maynard does a really good job of putting him in positions to be successful. And then he's got playmakers out wide. He's got playmakers that can make plays. Um, you know, for us, you know, it's about, you know, just playing ground and tiger football and, and, and being focused. You know, there's been times if you take away five plays or so from, uh, from us defensively, you know, it's a little different. Uh, but, you know, the opponent has a lot to do with that as well. Uh, so for us, you know, we have to focus. We have to play great football, but we have to be on key and be where our feet are all the time. Uh, that's the most important thing, especially this week when you're playing against a prolific offense like AM. and uh, Our next question comes from Brian Bearfield. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Brian. Uh, did the change at the offense coordinator position, did that affect you all? Because in the first 10 possessions, you you all had, I think, seven punts, and then you had an interception, you had a turnover on down. So was it just getting adjusted to a new system? Uh, it's not necessarily a new system, you know, uh, because, you know, it's the system is the system, of course. You know, that's, 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 uh, that's going to be up in the air as well. Uh, but um, it was more so, you know, getting used to another play caller, um, you know, and, and, and trying to get gain a rhythm. Uh, but also, too, you know, uh, Pine Bluff did a really good job. You know, they play really good defense and they're aggressive and uh, they basically forced us into some situations uh, that we didn't want to be in. Uh, so it's, it's not just us. You know, I want to take my hats off to them as well. Uh, but, you know, you have to be able to move the football. You have to be able to stay on the field. And, you know, with a prolific passer like a and like, like uh, Pine Bluff has, you can't keep going three and out because all you're doing is giving him more opportunities and more bullets in order to, uh, to, to hit you with. And that's what they did. You know, they, they, uh, like you said, we punted, you know, a lot early and that kept giving them opportunities to get on the field. And anytime your defense is on the field, I don't care how good you are defensively when your defense is on the field and continually having to stay on the field, um, you know, you're going to be in a, a, a tough, tough disadvantage situation. What was the adjustments that they made in the second half, especially in the third quarter where they scored 28 points? 
Well, I thought they did a really good job of, of schematically, you know, uh, doing some things that, that took advantage of our lack of focus. Um, you know, they ran some, a couple of, you know, trick plays, reverse passes and things of that nature. And if your eyes are not where they're supposed to be, and if you're, you're not reading your keys, then, you know, you're going to get caught and, and we got caught and they hit on all of them. And, uh, you know, it all started with an interception for a touchdown. Then it, then it was a, 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 a kick return that we were trying to, uh, basically fair catch and we dropped it. And anytime you drop a fair, a fair call kickoff return, the ball goes where it is. And uh, that put us behind the eight ball on the minus two yard line. So, um, you know, it's, it's all of us. It ain't just, it ain't just the offense. It ain't just, you know, what we're doing in other phases. It's, it's the entire team. And, and that falls solely on me. And uh, at the end of the day, I have to do better and it has to trickle down for me. Thank you. Any final questions for Coach Fobbs? Coach Fobbs, thank you so much for your time, sir. We look forward to speaking with you next week. Thank you all. Next, we'll be joined by Arkansas Pine Bluff head coach, Doc Gamble. Doc Gamble, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. Coach, I uh, appreciate you taking some time to join us, obviously, uh, and we do apologize. We're a tad bit behind schedule. But, uh, Coach, if you could please start us out with an opening statement about your team's uh, big 48-21 to 21 win over Grambling State. Uh, it was a good win for us, a good win for our program. We were able to uh, go to Grambling and snap a losing streak that we had had. Uh, uh, you know, they, they have owned us here, I guess, over the last six years. I didn't know it was six. Uh, I just know that they have been kicking our butts uh, the last two years, uh, last two times that we played them, you know, some very close games. So uh, it's a good win for our program, and, and uh, uh, we're happy about it. And now it's time to get, look forward to uh, playing a, another good opponent here this week in Alabama State. We do ask our media if you have questions for Coach Gamble, please utilize the raise your hand feature. Our first question goes to Charles Bishop. Coach Gamble, Charles Bishop, and Dr. Beals inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you guys started off the game with the onside kick. Uh, talk a little bit about the aggressive mindset to go to Grambling and, and start the game in this manner. I mean, you know, it's just uh, you, we put in some preparation and uh, we saw some things on video that we thought we would be able to do. Uh, you know, you tend to we practice some things at times that uh, you always keep in your hip pocket and you never get a chance to get to. And then you just say, Hey, let's go ahead and do it. And since we always practicing it and the guys ask about it, coach, why are we always doing this? Say, well, at some point it's going to come up where we're going to be able to use it. And, uh, this was a good chance to do it. And, and we did it and we were, uh, able to recover the, uh, the, the kick. A quick follow-up question. Uh, Skylar Perry has, has really been uh, on target with his receivers. Uh, just talk a little bit about the, the maturation of Skylar from last year to now. Well, you know, for us, as Skyler's been, I, I've been saying this forever, is he's been the same guy that he was when he was, came in as a, as a freshman. He's just now maturing, um, and it's his job full-time now. He's not splitting uh, reps, you know, and, and a lot of times, I, you know, I tell people it was, it was, I was kind of hiding. Uh, when, you, when you play two quarterbacks at times, well, in my case, from being a former quarterback is, you know, you kind of hide some, being able to hide some guys' deficiencies, uh, you know, and a lot of it that was just his youth. Well, you know, there's no hiding now, you know, so uh, with him, it's, it's his show and uh, he's our leader and uh, he's done a good job at that. And the thing about it, he's been the same person he's always have been. And, uh, you know, he's improved with, with his passing, you know, so uh, to us, it's just, you know, he, he played uh, last two games has been been uh, against schools from his home state. Uh, and then for us, it's just getting him to settle down, you know, and, and he, I, I don't know if they he felt slight about any recruitment or what, you know, but it's just, uh, and I don't know, you know, with him, I kind of joke with him a little bit. I say, all right, man, you playing, now you playing, you play Southern, now you playing Grambling. Uh, you, you can go off the walls or you're going to settle down and play. Uh, and he said, no, nah, I'm good, coach. And then he goes out there and, and he's uh, a little antsy and things like that. But uh, he's been well, good for us. And, you know, once he settled down, he's, he's been a real good player for us. Sure thing. Thank you, coach. Next question comes from Dr. Kenyatta Cavill. Yes, Coach Gamble, this is Kenyatta inside HBCU Sports Lab. Good to talk to you again. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. But as you move forward, thank you. Uh, as you move forward, what do you see about Alabama State uh, as you start to prepare for them this weekend? 
another big time challenge. You know, another big time challenge. They're a good football team. Uh, got good players, good coaches. And, you know, I know some of those guys on that coaching staff. Uh, no Coach Hill, and, and uh, it's probably be the only week Coach Hill don't get a text from me, you know. So, uh, you know, and he might not text me. If he do text me, I know he's he's trying to pull a, pull something out of his sleeve there. So, but no, uh, uh, a good program. We got some good players. Dynamic running back, quarterback's good. Uh, they're playing well up front. Uh, wide outs are good. Uh, uh, they could easily be undefeated at this point. Defensively, they're playing lights out. They're stingy. Um, you know, line, outstanding linebacker. I mean, they're a solid football team, man, and it's going to be a big-time challenge for us. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Next question comes from Brian Bearfield. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Um, to piggyback off of uh, what you said earlier about your quarterback, uh, I know that a lot of preparation goes into, you know, the, the week, the practice leading up to the game. What do you see when you're watching him in practice, and especially with the connection that he has with the, the receivers? Well, Skyler, you know, Coach Skyler, you know, the, the hardest position against Coach here in our program, I, everybody believes, I believe it, is the quarterback position, you know, one being, because uh, they got two quarterback coaches, Ken Evans and myself. Uh, so they get coached the hardest. And, uh, but to see him daily, the, the toughness he shows mentally has been the most impressive thing about him, you know, and, uh, and, and his relationship with the wide out crew is, is gotten even better because of, you know, he's not splitting time. You know, those guys in the past would go talk one, would go to several guys would go talk to one quarterback and the other guys would talk to the other court, talk to him. And, you know, and so it was kind of split a little bit. And now guys are staying after getting extra done uh, with him uh, as well. So that relationship has is, is gotten even stronger with that, that crew. But, uh, you know, with everybody, Scott has been, a, he, I, I so I've always said that he's a magnet, you know, he's a people magnet, you know, people gravitate to him and, um, you know, so, uh, but the biggest thing he shows daily for us is the mental toughness. Uh, you know, he, he gets coached hard and, uh, and we just want him doing things the right way all the time and being consistent and, uh, and doing things uh, the right way and all doing it the right way all the time. And going on the other side of the ball, Coach, you, you all made some great second half adjustments. Can you talk about your defense and how they stepped up in the second half? Yeah, I got a defensively, you know, they gave us a chance to, to, to do some things early on. They played lights out, I believe, the whole game uh, for us. Uh, they gave up two, you know, uh, in the secondary, two big plays, two big pass plays. We, was, we were upset about that. But other than that, we, I think we played the run real, real well. We, we defended real well. We, uh, you know, they had really two good quarterbacks as well, Gremlin does. And, and uh, I, I think we, we slowed them down as much as we need to do. Uh, much as we had to do uh, to, to, to give us a chance to win the football game. And, uh, but uh, our defense staff and led by John Bradley, they do a great job. And, and uh, you know, I kind of chirped in there a little bit this week. And I, I think they would say, man, you haven't been coming in here before. Stay up out of here now. So, uh, but uh, I was like, all right, you guys got it. So go ahead and, and do it. And, and uh, But I trust what they're doing and, and they're doing a good job with it. And, the biggest thing, too, the, biggest, the problem for us is, uh, and I'm going to say the problem, I'm a little disappointed in our penalties uh, that we had, but part of that was me. Uh, you know, I, I'll take a few of those uh, uh, because they were really jacked up and ready to go play. So, uh, but other than that, man, you know, yeah, I, I guys have done a good job over there. Next question comes from E. Taylor. What's going on, Coach? Hey, Dave. How you doing? I'll make it, man. Uh, I know, you know, these first couple of games, the offense has done what they've done. The defense has played well as well. But you guys have been getting some 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 big plays out of the special teams as well, man. Uh, how big has that been at this point in the season, Coach? Well, for us, we just always say we got to play complementary football and right? all all aspects of it. You know, every every uh, segment of the game complements the other one. So, you know, we put an emphasis on on every aspect of the, of the game, offensively, defensively, and special teams and all. We all compliment each other, you know, and we got to we let them guys know that, you know, we spend a lot of time at doing those things because it's an important part of the game, you know. So uh, we expect them guys to be, you know, as, as units uh, to be just as strong as the offensive and defensive units that we have. Any final questions for Coach Gamble?
Okay. As always, Coach, we appreciate your time. We look forward to speaking with you again next week. All right. Thank you. We'll next be joined by Mississippi Valley State Head Coach Dancy. Do we have Coach Dancy on the line with us? Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. Appreciate it, Coach, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Coach, obviously interesting uh, scheduling uh, for you guys with uh, – few weeks off before your next opponent. If you can just kind of open us up with a statement about where your program currently stands today. I thought last week went well. Um, for the first time, we had everybody um, healthy and back, uh, you know, from the COVID-19. And we, were, and we were able to put together a great week of practice, some consecutive good days of practice. Uh, I think we haven't had that since, you know, in, in almost a month. So, you know, that's been good, being able to work on our – Offensive red zone, uh, being able to be, uh, you know, get some one on one, seven on seven in with, with 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 everybody being available at practice. So I thought last week was good for us and um, being able to have some good practices for the first time. Appreciate those comments, Coach. Obviously, you'll get a chance to host uh, your your home opener here in a few weeks. Arkansas Pine Bluff. Will, uh, will, will come to town there and it'll be in it to face your team. Uh, what have you kind of noticed from Coach Gamble and his ball club up to this point in the season? A very, very good football team. As you watch them, um, offensively, defensively, special teams, you know, special teams. I think they came out the first play of the uh, game against Gremlin and the onside kick. You know, those guys uh, have been playing some very good football. Offensively, very efficient. Uh, quarterback, Scholar Perry. Uh, has completed over sixty percent of his passes in the you know last two games. So, uh, got a big time receiver number three, number one, uh, Josh Wilkes, averaging one hundred and some yards a game. And and defensively, they're flying around. They do a lot of things defensively. You got to get prepared for as an offense. And um, you know, secondary, I think they got Jalen Thigpen, a guy, a kid right here from Mississippi, who had two interceptions. I think he took one to the house against Grambling. So, it's a very very fine football team. You know, they play hard as a team. This team plays very hard, and I think you got to be ready in all three phases of the, ga phases of the game to, to, to compete with this team. Media, if you have any questions for Coach, please use the raise your hand feature. Uh, we'll get your questions into the queue for Coach Dancy. Coach, shift and focus back to your team. Uh, offensively, obviously, we know you've talked uh, extensively about the play at the quarterback position. Uh, if you can talk a little bit about what you've seen from a growth standpoint, maybe between your first game from Jackson State and the subsequent practices leading up to your next game against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Like I said, I think that first game was just getting, you know, Jelani, he hasn't played in, in two years. You know, he was a transfer player. He hasn't played in two years. So I think that first game, he was just getting his feet wet. And like I said, with seven practices prior to that game, um, I thought he did a, a okay job in, in, in managing our troops and leading them up and down the field. Like I said, we just couldn't put it in in the red zone. And those are some areas that we've been working um, throughout the course of this week of practice. First question comes from Brian Bearfield. Coach, after having such a long layover before you even was able to start the season and now you come in and your kids are off, your, your players are off two weeks, how do you keep them focused having only played one game? I like, like I said, you know, um, and prior to that, we never had a, a full team to practice. Uh, it, it was either a guy missing here or a guy missing there. Now having everybody out there, um, I think they understand how important it is that we uh, you know, focus on ourselves, this, you know, last week. And now, now we're starting to uh, work our way into Pine Bluff this week. But we wanted to just get everybody out, back out, and have that full unit together and just, like I said, put together some, some good consecutive days of practice with everybody being out there. So I think that alone, you know, motivates them and, let, and, and, and pushes them to, to, to come out and work hard because they know we're going to go up against them. They know what we're facing, you know, down the line. But we're, right now, we just want to focus on how do we get better offensively and defensively every day so that when, the, uh, you know, when, next week when we play Pine Bluff, we will be a, a much better team. Coach, how does that – how is – you've seen what happened with Prairie View and, you know, and them going into the COVID protocol. You know, right. with you having those those two bye weeks, how, how hard is it as a coach to keep those kids, you know, out of the – because they can get caught up in any type of situation, not even knowing who they're around, correct? Correct, correct. And, I, and, and you know, you know, we – under, we, 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 we understood we, we understood that before we, you know, even came into the season, you know, how 
we had to create our own bubble, you know, not do certain things and allowing them to do certain things on, on certain days because we know we be we will be tested. So, you know, it's kind of hard with young men, but I got a group that understands because they see what could happen, you know, if they do go out, if they do the wrong thing, because they want to play football. These guys want to play football. So everybody's trying to do the right thing. But sometimes, you know, this thing is this COVID thing is something that you you, you can't see. You, you don't know where is it at any, any time. And it's not just going out and getting it. You can get it right here, you know, on your campus. So everybody's just trying to be cautious and careful so we can have everybody like we do right now. Any final questions for Coach Dancy with Mississippi Valley State? Coach, as always, we appreciate your time and look forward to speaking with you again next week. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next up, we'll be joined by Prairie View A&M head coach Eric Dooley. I believe we do have Coach Dooley with us. Uh, good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Doing great, Coach. Thank you for asking. Um, coach, if uh, you could just please kind of start us out uh, with an opening statement. Um, obviously, uh, you know, getting ready for uh, upcoming week. So if you can just start us out with an opening statement about your program and looking ahead to your next opponent. Yeah, it, it was a tough week for us because of uh, what we could not do. And we understand that, uh, you know, we, we, we said that a long time ago that uh, we understand that you can replace games, but you cannot replace lives. So uh, the guys clearly understood uh, where we're going with that. So uh, now it's just more of a, a mental type thing. As far as my guys, I, I know that they're in shape. Uh, we did have to take some days off because of uh, the protocol, but uh, I, I like where they are right now and, and the concentration. You know, it, it helps when you have an experienced team uh, that understand the things that need to be done. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, Coach. We'll now open it up for questions. Our first question comes from Brian Bearfield. Coach, was this a, a, a contact tracing thing or uh, did one of the kids actually uh, – it was one of the kids diagnosed with COVID-19. Well, you know, I, of course, I would never get into that privacy act like that to say anything like that. But I uh, know it was, it was more of a cautious type thing uh, when you take a look at it. And, and I think we have to because, you know, uh, you can tell that parent that you missed the game, but you can't tell that parent about a life. And, and we feel that's more important. So as a university, we took a whole a stand for it. And, uh, of course, the uh, commissioner backed us up on it. So we had to take the proper protocols to move forward. And playing as well as you were coming in, you know, getting ready to prepare for a game. Now you have to sit out two weeks. How do you keep those the kids focused and, and get them ready for the next two weeks coming up? You know, it's about expectation. You know, you're not hoping it's about expectation. And those guys understand where we are. And they understood coming uh, into the season that, you know, you can be playing one week and off the next week. Uh, so those things understood. Uh, we know we got to do the necessary things. It's all about – uh, you know, I heard one coach mention about fundamentals. That's what this comes down to, fundamentals and discipline. So our guys just got to remain uh, uh, fundamentally sound and, and stay disciplined. And I think we, uh, you know, we'll be able to get through this. Year. Currently taking questions for Coach Dooley with Prairie View and him. Okay, we have another question from Brian Bearfield. Uh, Coach, off the field, uh, a couple of your players, uh, uh, former players, are being invited to attend the HBU uh, scouting combine. How does that make you feel? Well, you know, I, I think it's good. I think it's good for HBCU because uh, I do think that those guys uh, deserved uh, a platform to get in to work out. Uh, of course, I wish it was the uh, the big combine, but this is something that's much needed, and I understand the people that's behind it. So I'm very excited for those young men to get a chance to just play their talent, uh, you know, and I hope it just get bigger. But it, it's a great opportunity for those uh, young men because uh, when, when you think about the guys from last year, they didn't get that opportunity. They, you know, those guys, some of those guys put a lot of work in, you know, uh, and, and it kind of goes against what you were always uh, telling those guys. You work hard, you know, it's going to pay off. And those guys didn't get a chance to let it pay off uh, because of uh, uh, the, the pandemic. But, uh, you know, things worked out well uh, this year here. Now those guys are going to get that opportunity and, and those guys have been ready. And can you talk about how good it feels to have coached the Super Bowl champion? <laughs> that, was, that was a blessing for that young man. I had an opportunity to talk to him the other day, and I, he's just excited. He don't, he don't, I don't think he understood uh, 
the accomplishment that you've been able to accomplish because, you know, you can be in that National Football League for 10 years, 15 years, and never get that opportunity. And him just being his second year uh, to do that, he's very, very blessed, and uh, he's very excited about it. So uh, uh, that, that's a good feeling for him. Uh, i tell you what, it's a good recruiting too. <laughs> Coach, uh, obviously a few extra weeks to prepare for your next opponent. Uh, when you look at Alabama A&M on film, what are some of the things that stand out about them? Well, you know, the very first thing that comes to my mind, explosive. The offense, they're very, very explosive. And uh, a position that I'm very dear to uh, is the wideouts. They got some wideouts uh, that, can, that can play football, uh, but then they also have someone that can get it to them. Uh, but, you know, I'm more pleased with, you know, when you talk about everybody's going to talk about the offense and the things that they're doing. I look at their defense. They're flying around. They're playing uh, great defense, and, and that's what you need to complement your offense. So just as a team, uh, and then when you think about the guy that's, that's coaching them, you know they're going to be well coached. They're going to be uh, prepared. So uh, it's just competition week in and week out. Uh, I think every coach has alluded to that, uh, that you know you don't get no freebies in this conference. Uh, it's very, very competitive. So every game that you play, you got to know that it's going to be a battle for 60 minutes. Currently taking questions for Coach Dooley with Prairie View a &M. Any final questions for Coach Dooley? Okay. Coach, as always, we appreciate your time. We look forward to speaking with you again next week. Thank you. Thank you. We are a few minutes ahead of schedule. We'll be joined by Southern University head coach, Dawson Odoms at 11.05. What's the schedule? You are. We'll give our media about three more minutes to get uh, here on the call if they want to uh, be joined and speak with Coach Odoms, and that'll take place right at about three minutes at 11.05.
Appreciate everyone's patience. We'll now be joined by Southern University head football coach Dawson Odoms. Coach, obviously big win this past week against the Texas Southern Tigers. If you could please recap that win and uh, also talk to us a little bit about uh, your upcoming preparation for your next opponent. Well, I thought the guys played extremely well. I thought we did a great job in the bye week, uh, just really getting them refocused and locked in. It was a tough loss for us. You had to sit on it for two weeks, and then you had to regroup. And coming out of that bye week, I thought our guys was in the right frame of mind. I thought our mindset is where it needed to be to be successful. I thought offensively, we finally capitalized. We've been moving the football our first two games. We finally was able to put the ball in the end zone and capitalize on good field position. Uh, defense was able to get off the field on third down, which is something that we talked about. And we give up some plays. We made some mistakes offensively and defensively. But I think overall our effort was was much improved. Our attention to detail was better. And we slowly played the way we thought we was capable of playing all year. And then special teams, I thought we did an outstanding job all day long with just trying to be consistent. I thought our guys did a great job in executing the schemes that we had in place. Uh, they throw a lot of things at you. They move a lot of people on their punt team, uh, and they and they try to create some number advantages with their special teams. And I thought our guys did an outstanding job. We was able to get a kick return, which is always a plus. But I think overall we played much better, and we just want to continue to try to get better. If we do those things, I think we have a chance to be successful going down the stretch. Appreciate that, Coach. Our first question will come from Jim Klein-Peter, followed by Brian Bearfield. Jim? Hey, Coach. Uh, yeah, you're, uh, you, you've you been talking about tight ends in the preseason, and your tight ends have uh, uh, scored three touchdowns this year. Would you talk a little bit about how y'all have um, brought them into the offense as, as blockers and as receivers? Is that part of Zach Gra uh, Grassi's uh, game plan? Well, Zach, I think we have a – a good set of tight ends. We still have a couple of guys that are down. Hopefully we can get some guys back uh, doing this by week. Uh, but I think they're an extension of our offense. They give us uh, added advantages in the run game and they're good guys, they're good receivers out of that tight end position. So uh, I always say, man, you you tough on offense when you utilize the tight end. And we, we got a good one. Uh, Ethan Howard is a freshman that's only going to get better. Uh, Travis Tucker is coming on with that position. Clyfer Bass. And, and Travis Perkins. So we're getting those guys healthy. They're playing better. And, and it's about playing with confidence. And I think that room is doing that. Um, you also talked about your safeties. You were a little concerned about that. And it looks like guys like Chase Howard and Jacoby Jones uh, are excelling for you. Would you talk a little bit about those two guys? Well, they're experienced guys. They've been in our program. They, they understand how to get themselves ready for games. Uh, now it's about our depth. Our depth at that position has to come on down the stretch because uh, we're going to need everybody. Uh, we're going to get into the meat and potatoes, and and hopefully we can stay healthy, get some guys back healthy to give us the depth that we need. But those guys are playing really, really well. I thought Jacoby Jones played his his best game to date here at Southern University, and it was exciting to see he made a couple plays for us. But communication is big on defense, and those two guys are great communicators. Appreciate you, Jim. Next question comes from Brian Bearfield. Morning, Coach. Good morning, Brian. Uh, what did you see at, at, after the first half to make the adjustment to – you all rushed for 195 of your 256 yards in the second half. What, what adjustment was made at halftime? Well, I mean, I think it was just the game plan, uh, just giving more opportunities to the offense. Uh, I thought our offensive line – was was very dominant. I thought they did an outstanding job of run blocking, pass blocking. But I tell people all the time, uh, a good recipe for playing good defense is a good running game. When you can run the football, uh, it says a lot. Uh, and I thought our offense did an outstanding job of, of just running backs, just doing a great job of being patient and letting holes open up because our offensive line and our tight ends did a great job of blocking and uh, it was good to see. I thought those guys at the point of attack were were in position and the backs made some great cuts with great vision. So I think when you have that, uh, you're able to run the football. And I just thought it was just us leaning more on the running game in the second half. 
And, and coach, how would you be able to bring um, Lampley back down, your quarterback back down to earth? I mean, he threw two passes and it was two touchdowns. So how would you be able to bring him back down to earth and practice this week? Well, Lampley is a, I mean, when you talk about being a pro, it's about being ready when your name's called. Uh, Skelton went down. Lampley got his warm up in. First play, he goes in. We call a pass, and he executed to perfection. Lampley is also a former starter here. He started games, and, and we're blessed. We're blessed to have quarterbacks that have played and, and could start on a lot of teams. And we're deep at that position. And you got to have that because you're one injury away, you're one test away from your backup being in. Uh, but we're blessed uh, to have guys like John Lampley who can get prepared to play. And regardless of the situation, uh, he he did an outstanding job when his name was called. He moved the offense. And, you know, I'm proud of him because I went to him and told him that's 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 pro-like, son, because when you're ready to go, when your name's called, whether it's one play, whether it's a series, that says a lot about you as an individual. Next question comes from Jared Joseph. Hey, Coach, the way that, you know, this week went, it was kind of almost like perfection. How do you carry this over from your performance against Texas Southern and use it as momentum for the remainder of the season? Well, that's our, our last bye week unless some something happens and we get another one. But we just have to understand what it's about and teaching our guys the why and the importance of why we do things and using that bye week and having a plan. Every bye week is different. Uh, we don't go into a bye week with the same plan. Uh, we think about uh, certain situations and circumstances that needs to be talked about and how we go about executing those things in a bye week. What do we need to work on? A lot of the focus is on us. How can we get us better? And as long as we get better during the bye week, then we get into the preparation the second week and just making sure that our guys stay, stay mentally locked in. And that's hard for two weeks. It's hard to keep them mentally locked in. But we have a plan. We just went through it two weeks ago. So now we have a plan for the next two weeks as we get ready for our next opponent. Next question comes from Kevin Batiste. Hey, Coach. Uh, following up on what you just said about the bye week, I mean, does it feel kind of you know unusual having two bye weeks in – Three weeks, when you, especially when they were supposed to have a, you know, the game against Alcorn? Well, I mean, we already know that during this pandemic, it, expect things to be different. And that's how you have to approach the season. And you can't worry about the things you can't control. You just have to focus on the next day, focus on the next play. And we knew this was the schedule when the season started. So now we just got to go and execute the plan that we have in place. And you just keep moving forward. No need to ponder on what you got because you know when the hand was dealt, this is how it was going to be. So we just adjust what we're doing and put a plan in place and keep moving forward and try to work towards that consistency that we're looking for as a program. And uh, your defense uh, last Saturday, they came up with they came up with stops when needed, uh, for some turnovers. But, you know, but there were a couple of uh, breakdowns in the secondary. There was the long drive. Uh, in the late in the first quarter, looking back at it, do you guys think you could have allowed you know you know less than twenty three points? Well, I thought we could have played you know a lot better. Uh, we played better than we had. We had a couple buzz, but again, it's it's about being consistent. I think as we go into this by week, work on some things that that cause you some problems, and, and you get better. And then it's all about being locked in and communicating, coaches to players, players to coaches. And we'll do a better job. And that's what it's all about, is to continue to get better. And if we do that, I think we'll continue to play much better defense. And we're going to need to play better on defense. And if we do that, we're going to give ourselves a chance to win football games. I, I do think that the game is set up for offenses to be successful. But I'm a, I'm a defensive-minded individual. I, I still think you can play great defense in this day and age of, of college football. And to me, that's what it's going to take going down the stretch if you want to be successful. Any final questions for Coach Odoms? Coach, thank you for joining us. We look forward to speaking with you next week. Always a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Go Jags. Next up, we'll be joined by Texas Southern head coach, Clarence McKinney. We're about a minute ahead of schedule, so we'll be joined 
by Coach McKinney here momentarily. Okay, it's 11.15. We'll now uh, take a few minutes to speak with Texas Southern head coach McKinney. Coach McKinney, good morning. Good morning. Coach, uh, if you could please just start us out with an opening statement about your team's most recent outing uh, versus Southern. Yeah, tough loss against a really good team in, in the Southern Jaguars. Um, <clears throat> thought um, our guys played really hard for the most part. I felt like we uh, had some momentum un until the – kickoff return we gave up right there at the end of the first half and it kind of took the air out of us um, but there were some positive things we played a true freshman at quarterback his first start and uh, he fared pretty well uh, did a lot better than what a lot of guys would have done in that situation uh, and played a, a couple other true freshmen at receiver that, that came up with some big plays for us uh, defensively we didn't do uh, well enough to win the game we didn't we didn't stop the run and we know uh, coach Odom and this team's like to run the ball. Didn't stop the run, and, and <clears throat> we put ourselves in a bad situation. Appreciate that, Coach. We'll now open it up for questions for Coach McKinney. Our first question will come from Brian Bearfield. Coach, what went into the decision to start Jalen Brown? Um, the, <laughs> the decision to start Jalen Brown was due to the injuries that we had uh, with our first two quarterbacks in the Prairie View game. Um, as you, you can see, uh, Devin Williams was out after his injury in the Prairie View game, as well as uh, Thaddeus Payton. So Jalen was the next guy up. Uh, he's been right there in the competition since he's been here with those two guys, and, and we felt confident in putting him in the game. Coach, I, um, I, I know that you all didn't get the victory, but there was a play during the game. Uh, it was in the second quarter before halftime where Jonathan Giles uh, dropped the touchdown pass and he was really hard on himself. I just want to ask you, as a coach, how do you, I mean, as a coach, how do you feel about your players rallying around him? Because he was on the bench very hard on himself, but, you know, the players rallied around him. They were encouraging him and all the way through to halftime, you know, just can you speak at, uh, from a coach's perspective on how that makes you feel from your players? Well, this this team is like a family, and they're a family of brothers. And and when one's down, um, they like to pick each other up, and that's what a family does. And and uh, our team knows that we're gonna need Jonathan Giles to make plays for us to be successful, and and they need him uh, mentally strong and and mentally ready to go out there and do those things. So I'm not surprised that that guys were on the sideline picking him up because we know how important he is to the program. Currently taking questions for Coach Clarence McKinney with Texas Southern University. I do, I, and I don't know if I can just jump in here because my chat is disabled. So I didn't want to be off cue just hopping in there. But I, since, so since it's disabled, I'm just going to hop in and say, this is Keisha, Black College Experience. How you doing today, Coach McKinney? Doing well. How you doing, Miss Kelly? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Isha, we can't hear you. Keisha, we can't hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. So it's, I was saying, looks like your next opponent will be, looks like you will be facing uh, the Gramlin State Tigers on, on the weekend of April 3rd. How are you preparing for your next opponent, Coach McKinney? Well, we're, we're in a bye week, so we're going to focus on Texas Southern this first week because we have to do some things to get us better. We have to, uh, one, get healthy, and then improve in some areas, tackling and, and blocking and things of that nature. And then on the following week, we'll start to prepare for grambling and, and putting our game plan together, and, and um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll attack it that way. 
for our media, not quite sure what's going on with our chat, but if you could use the raise your hand feature, if you have a question, as opposed to the chat, please use the raise your hand feature here. If you have a question, uh, not exactly sure what's going on with the chat uh, request here, but please use raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, I do see a hand raised. Our next question will go to Brian Bearfield. Uh, Coach, what, what happened? Uh, can you tell us what happened in the second half uh, w- with the run game for uh, for Southern? They, they, it seemed to it seems as if they were, you know, focused on running the ball more in the second half because you all did a great job of stopping them in the first half. Yeah, I think they they kind of wore us down. You know, um, we're, we're thin up front. We're we're um, we're down some guys. And so our, our guys that that play, they have to play for a, a quite a, a number of plays, and that's unusual within the D line. And our guys kind of wore down. Southern has some big offensive linemen up front, and they they can you know pound you up you know with that run game. So I think that's what happened to our our guys uh, defensively. Currently taking questions for Coach Clarence McKinney with Texas Southern. Any final questions for Coach McKinney with Texas Southern? Okay. Coach, we appreciate you joining us. We look forward to speaking with you next week. Thank you for having us. Go Tigers. How's everyone? Morning, Coach. How are you, sir? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Before we get started, can I say a couple of things? Uh, can we do a better job on um, like halftime? I like to have stats. Every coach wants stats. We want stats at halftime. Can we do a better job with that in some form of fashion? Um, I believe when we travel, the home team is responsible for that, as well as at the conclusion of the game. Um, can we set up prior to the game? a place that we can do the post-game press conference that's not in the middle of the walkway and, and somewhere, it don't have to be extremely comfortable, but somewhere that has the, the look that, that, that we would want, you would want, the HBCU use would want. So we could just put a, a, a better image out there as well. But statistics are everything to coaches at halftime and post-game. Just want to do better, man. Appreciate you, Coach, and thank you for joining us as always. Coach, if you could please just start us out with an opening comment about your team's most recent outing versus Alabama State. That was a heck of a football game. Uh, I love good football. You know, obviously we we would love to win each and every game. That's the goal. That's the vision. That's the dream. Um, But I love good football, Um, and we came up short. Um, Hats off to Alabama State. They did a phenomenal job. I I love the atmosphere. I love the the, – just uh, all of that, that, that swag football has given me thus far in our, in our kids, man. I, I love it. Very competitive. I love the emotions, the, the, hearing the band, even hearing the people. Um, I, I love it. It was a phenomenal game. We came up short. We didn't play well uh, whatsoever offensively, especially defensively. Our passing game, we never really got the running game established. We had some good spurts. Um, couple guys really performed well. Our special teams did a suffice job bouncing back from a lackluster performance the prior week. But we got to clean up some things, and we are cleaning up some things defensively as well as offensively, as well as the individuals uh, that we expect to play much better. But it was a phenomenal game. Hats off to Alabama State. Appreciate those comments, Coach. Want to open it up for questions from our media. Our first question comes from Charles Bishop. How you doing, Coach? How you doing, Joe? I want to start off by uh, asking, uh, you've preached smart, fast, tough, and discipline uh, yeah. since you've come to Jackson State. Uh, did it kind of catch you a little bit off guard that there were some uh, sort of some mental lapses down the stretch? Well, I don't I think we've only played, only acquired the four, attained the four attributes only once in the four games that we played. Um, we definitely didn't play smart and we weren't disciplined. We played tough and we were fast. We, we really did. So, and I tell the kids all the time, two out of four is not going to win. Baseball, yeah, not football. 
and uh, hats off to Alabama State once again, because they had something to do with us not attaining the four attributes that we want to display in each and every game, as well as practice. And I want to follow up on that. Uh, you touched on it with the special teams. Uh, Lane McGregor had a couple of nice punts where we pinned Alabama mm -hmm. State deep. And uh, your uh, field goal kicker, uh, Missick, he, he had a, a, a nice outing. Uh, has your special team sort of turned the corner a little bit? I don't know about turning the corner. I, I know they perform so much better, but we still should have to hold our breaths for an extra point. We, we shouldn't have to do that. We don't want to be at that point. But you got to understand what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do that the human eye and the naked eye aren't seeing is we're trying to develop players. So you don't see any starters on special teams, really. Um, so that's been a rule because I'm trying to develop players. Now, we may have to put a couple guys here and there on special teams. But what we've been trying to do is to give the other guys a chance to solidify themselves. And we tell the backup, you're not going to get on the playing field unless you come through the special teams because special teams are that are that important. They call them special for a reason. So um, when it gets down to it, maybe the fall, but we're not even thinking about that right now. Our starters aren't playing special teams. Sure thing. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Although Nugget, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't even count the returners. I'm sorry. That's discounting the return man. Because uh, uh, Warren Newman, as well as Nugget, uh, played, uh, they returned the ball in their starters. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Next question comes from Rashad Milligan. Good morning, Coach. How are you doing today? Good. Uh, my question for you, uh, do, do you feel like there are any positives at all for, for you guys to get that kind of first loss out the way in the spring as opposed to the fall? I don't. I don't count losses positive. Losses are negative. I mean, we could turn it into something and turn it into a learning lesson, and that's what we're trying to do. But our kids, uh, they fought well, man. They fought well on the road. We're just playing horrible football on the road. Um, look at the scoring difference of home and on the road defensively, and we just got to figure it out defensively what we're not doing on the road because on the road we're, we're a totally different defense than we are at home. And uh, have you learned anything? Well, what is yeah. one thing, if you have learned anything about your team? Um, did, did, did you hear me, Coach? Oh. What do we learn about our team? We, we learn yeah. something every day. We learned that they, uh, they're resilient. They fought to the end. We just got to learn how to win. And we got to be more disciplined and play smarter football. And we'll do that. Next question comes from Stephen J. Gaither. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? Good morning, sir. Good, good. Um, you know, just looking at, at the game and everything like that, um, you know, you talk about, you know, you talk about, uh, you know, the guys being able to play and focus on your team and what you guys are doing. But obviously, um, you know, with the national ranking this week and then, you know, and, and everything that's come with that. And last week you said, you know, you guys were going to be the hunted because of you. Um you got a, guys got a chance to experience that this week, maybe at a level that you hadn't before. Just talk about, um, you know, usually that comes with winning. Do you think maybe this, uh, you know, your guys got a chance, got out, you know, this is something that they haven't necessarily won. You know, they, they haven't had the winning to back up being the hunted. How do you think they responded to that? Well, I think they were 3-0. and oh. I think they did have the winning to back up being the hunted. And uh, just because my association with it, I mean, it's the Super Bowl. Um, I believe the coach got doused with water for beating us in a regular season game, correct? Yes, sir. So what do you call that? <laughs> what do you call that? I think that's a celebration because you beat Jackson State. Let me tell you something about Jackson State, man. We expect to win. Our fans expect us to win. Coaches expect to win. That's the difference of the change because there's an expectation of winning. Was it the same expectation last year? No, it wasn't. So we're slowly but surely changing the thought processes and the minds of everyone connected to us. We just got to do the work to substantiate the thought. And we're going to do it. And we're going to plug guys in and they're going to get the job done. We just don't know how to win successfully yet. We don't know how to finish. We do not know how to put the exclamation mark at the end of the sentence. And we're building on that. And that's going to happen.
Right. And then my follow up really quickly. You, last week you talked about you guys not wanting to be on ESPN 14. And last week, last two weeks, you've been on ESPN 2. And then the next uh, couple of weeks, you're going to be on ESPN. Just talk yeah. about just just talk about that. You know, looking forward to that stage, even going far, further. My brother, that's changing the game. That's changing the game, not just for Jackson State. Every time we play on television and people want to see us, what does that, that, that do? that allows other teams, opposing coaches, everyone to be seen and heard and get the notoriety that we all desire. I mean, a, a lot of people didn't, didn't even know, uh, let me find him, where is he? Gray, is it Gray Ezra? I'm sorry, Ezra Gray, the running back from Alabama State? Yes, sir, Ezra Gray, yes, sir. I'm pretty sure the whole country knows who he is right now because the kid balled and I'm proud of him, man. You had a couple defensive backs that played some outstanding football. And guess what? I'm proud of them because they may get a shot to go to the next level because of the exposure and the tension warranted by Jackson State University. So coaches, they got to be careful what they say. They got to be careful how they interact. They got to be careful the, the feedback and the, the, the game that they spend to you guys. But you know why? Because everybody's watching. Unless you want to stay for the rest of your life. If you want to do that, if you want to stay somewhere for the rest of your life, cool. But if you want your coaching staff, your team, the players, everyone to go to the next level, you got to watch what you say because the lights are on you now. And it's a beautiful thing. The announcers, the lights on them too. The officials, everybody's getting seen and focused and noticed to possibly go to the next level, man. I think it's a beautiful thing. And I'm happy and I'm proud of it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Next question comes from Jim Klein-Peter. <laughs> Hi, Coach. I just wanted to ask a general question. Uh, how it's been the through the first four games, this experience for you? Are you having fun? Is it what you expected? And I, I don't know if you can uh, <laughs> keep it to 30,000 words or less. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm having so much fun. It's not work. I get to come to a job thankful. I'm so thankful that Jackson State so fit for, to hire me with a bunch of friends and a bump, bunch of people I call family. And we have the same commitment. And I love it. So I'm elated. I love the possibilities. I love the challenge of it. I love provoking change. And I love opening eyes. And that's what we're doing. We're opening eyes for everyone in the HBCU realm. We really are. The words that you guys write, the words that you regurgitate from me, the, the words that you spit from my, my, the kids that we're that playing on our team and opposing teams, man, those things are going national now. I absolutely love it. And we have so many more plans to take it even broader. They just said, well, we playing on, on ESPN. When was the last time? ESPN in the spring? Well, they don't even do that. I, I know this is a, a, a situation where we we'll playing games in the spring, but shoot, this is unbelievable, man. You got to admit it. And we got to be appreciative. We got to be thankful. And we got to take care of one another. We can't shoot at one another, man. We got to take care of one another. That's the big picture. The big picture ultimately are the kids. That's the big picture. What was your what was the genesis of your decision to, to take this on? Uh, what 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 brought you to this point? Timing is everything, and uh, the, the timing that um, what our people are are dealing with culturally, uh, uh, nationally, um, spiritually, financially, socially, economically. I mean that that's what really brought this on. And it was time. It was time that, that I got my off my butt, off my land, off my uh, 200 and a mule, and got my butt up and did something about it instead of talked about it in the dark. A lot of folks want to talk. They want to talk it, but they don't want to walk it. We're talking to them. We're walking it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, sir. Appreciate we've it. Got, we've got time for two more questions from Brian Bearfield and Keisha Kelly. Next question will come from Brian Bearfield. Yeah, well, hey, coach, morning. how you doing this morning? Just first doing? of all, one of your former one of your former teammates behind me, Indy Kalu, says hello. Indy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! God. Don't make me show out right now. That's my dog, Indy. He said, "You his dog. Don't make him show he, out right now." <laughs> he, he know. He, he know. He, he, know. he said, "He says he can't wait to have you on his uh, show uh, mm -hmm. to interview you." So, uh, but coach, I want to talk about uh, uh, Jalen Jones, and I know that he didn't end the game like he wanted to. But he was a leader and, you know, on, he he performed passing and rushing the ball. How were what, what was his uh, feelings? Of, how was he after the game, you know, after the interception? Um, 
was out there on a banged up hamstring uh, growing or whatever it was it and he fought to the end i'm happy with that he he know he he had a couple mistakes that, that cost us uh cost us field position as well uh, and that won't happen again i'm pretty sure he's a, he's a smart kid and he's going to take this and learn from it Last question comes from Keisha Kelly. Hey, Coach, how are you? How you doing, Ms. Kelly? I'm, I'm good. So my, my question is always simple. I know you take the time off, you prepare. What do you do to prepare for your next opponent? Uh, film, it is, shoot, I got a whole list of things we do <laughs> for the next opponent. I can't even start. It's a whole bucket list thing. Um, but I, I love it. The, the coaches do a phenomenal job. Trust, first of all, we have a tremendous staff. And uh, just sitting in the offense and defensive meetings today and just hearing them recant what transpired and the things that we can't allow to happen again and then seeing it going out there to practice and us going at a, a full-speed practice for like an hour and 15 minutes a day, it was phenomenal because we, we put that stuff behind us and we moved forward. But uh, we got to be more disciplined and we got to play smarter. That's pretty much it. And a game like that, you, you hate to lose, but when you break it down, we say, hey, did we lose? Uh, uh, did they win? Well, you got to figure out. You got to make that determination, man. Did we lose the game or did they just win the darn game? And that's a wonderful question for these kids. We we'll never want to give you anything. We want you to take it or earn it. And we felt like we gave it to them. But they played a heck of a football game, and I'm proud of them. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Coach, as always, we appreciate your time, sir. We look forward to speaking with you again next week. Thank you. God bless you all, man. I appreciate you all.